unity with unity with um, so that uh, in and now you know when you say uh, uh, oh well that's bullshit that he doesn't work from an outline you know or uh, but uh, I I have trained myself to work such that uh, you know I, I maybe it's not this group you know but or maybe it is but the Shaquille O'Neal example you know what Shaquille O'Neal does when when uh, Shaquille O'Neal is a very large African American uh, basketball player. And uh, when uh, a new talented player, you know, comes on the court with him for the first time, when he comes in to dunk, Shaquille O'Neal hurts him a little. You know, he blocks him, but he also hurts him a little. Uh, beyond reason, beyond fairness, you know, beyond justice. And he says, I do that as a favor to them to let them know, don't come to the rack with any weak shit. Uh, that is, if you're coming in, come in with all of it. Come, Bring all you got. And that's why I write the way I do. Uh, not because I, I don't care, but to train myself to come with everything in that moment and and that's how I am allowed to rest transparently now uh, a moment will come later you know where I see wait a second wait a second I'm allowed to go back because it's not a parlor trick and if I get a chance uh, our wonderful children, some of them are home now, you know, and, and uh, most of the raising has been done. But if you, but now if you see something, you know, where you can help them a little bit more, where you can help them make a connection or something, you're allowed. And, and it's done with such joy and such gratitude, such appreciation for the opportunity, because you see the living thing is in front of you. And it is an accomplished fact. And so it's a different sort of thing, you know, to smooth its hair or tell her, you see that you could do this and this would be kind and this. Uh, that's revision. And, uh, and you're allowed. Um, this young man. How old are you? Well, aren't you a little flattered that I called you a young man? <laughs> All right then. Why don't you give Why don't you give me two dollars then? The fuck was I just talking about? That's what I'm talking about. You're That's what I'm talking about. It's like the Thompson twins. You remember that joke? <laughs> Wait a minute. You're from Erie, Pennsylvania? That's what I'm talking about. Is that what you're talking about? You're saying you can put your hair and adjust it. You already spat it out. Now you're constantly revising your... But you're letting it be its own thing because you're guiding it. I'm running around, you know, neatening it up. And by neatening it up, what I'm trying to do is, I, I see it, it's a living thing now. And I am eliminating the fanciful distortions, which make less accessible the living imaginative thing to which the viewer can relate. If you must. 
What are you thinking of? You vicious thing. <laughs> what about a big mistake? What, 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 do you, what do you mean? No, you gotta kill yourself. <laughs> That's a fanciful uh, uh, association of the creative process with shame. Um, there, there uh, you know, there are no, the big mistake is a property of you thinking of yourself separate from the act of imagination. You know, uh, if, 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 you know, uh, the uh, shows that, that I've been lucky enough to work on, uh, people who aren't working on them, when they say, well, geez, that must be miserable for the actors, you know. But uh, if, if, if I see that something needs to be changed, I go in and I say, you know what, this needs to be changed. And if I say, oh, I made a big mistake, then I'm an asshole. If I say this needs to be changed, the, the thing that I've, I'm still in faith, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about this. And if the actor is in faith as well, well, that means we gotta work harder to stay in faith. But it doesn't change anything. And there is such joy in that process. You know, uh, if you're lucky enough to have a happy family relationship, or if you got a best friend, or you, you know, you got a wonderful marriage, uh, something happened. Let's go to bed. You know, it's not, I made a big mistake. And that agreement upon the meaning of a symbol, which in this case is simply the electricity that passes between us, which acknowledges the past, we can trust each other, let's go to bat. That is the symbol resting transparently in the spirit which gives it rise. That's art coming from love. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Just don't come in the paint with any weak shit. You know, come with the best you got, and then if more is revealed, more is revealed, and go to work. It, uh, this isn't about me or anyone else as an artist and how I work. You know, I, uh, there was a, uh, I had the privilege a couple of days ago of going back looking at the work of uh, a fellow who was associated with my teacher, for whom I had, I, 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 I just, uh, I didn't like this guy. For one thing, he didn't like me. He, he, uh, you know, he was a big anti-Semite, and uh, at some point, you know, he said, the Jews are gonna do to the English department at Yale, you know, what the niggers did to the South, or something like that. But, when he was in his work, I, I had occasion to go back and read an essay that he did. Just absolutely pure. Absolutely purely in the spirit. And, uh, and this was a guy, when you talk about outlines, this man was serious about outlines. And I would say, and his, 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 his that, that's how big. You could not fucking read his writing. You had to have a, uh, a magnet, you know, a tight ass little. But boy, when he was in the spirit. This essay was so beautiful as an explanation of, you know what he was talking about? He was talking about uh, Charles Francis Adams' theory about the decay of Western culture because to the extent that the allegiance to the symbol of money 
had deprived the symbol of its spiritual predication and that we were merely deteriorating now into sort of empty discharges of energy. Oh, what I, so this is the end of our break. So uh, uh, what uh, uh, I wanted to go on to say is that um, what complicates the execution of a series is that the capacity for fanciful association has become a principle of commerce attached to the process of art. Uh, let me explain, that's pretty abstract. Uh, a, a very attractive uh, a girl in a very sexually provocative pose sits on anything, a tractor. Uh, John Deere presents Law and Order. Uh, the fanciful connection is not just John Deere, but first blowjob from a white girl. See what I'm saying? And, uh, you know, the, the artist, is encouraged. It, now that's a fanciful association. There is nothing about that girl which is connected to the tractor. And there's nothing about the girl and the tractor which is connected to the story. But for the artist, the fanciful association which is offered is you get the story, you get the tractor, and you get the girl. But you got to tell the story that they want to hear, because otherwise, I never get the girl, and I never get the tractor. <laughs> so that is how, uh, 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 and, and our entire society is organized. Now, this is what Charles Francis Adams was talking about, that if the spirit, if we are not resting transparently in the spirit which gives us rise, then all of our symbolic identifications, because we are going to associate, whether fancifully or imaginatively. So, we look at uh, the presidential campaign. Fox attaches one set of fanciful associations to it. There's Hillary, she's not very pretty, and there's that black fellow, and there, that's one set of associations. MSNBC attaches another set of associations. Now, this is th these are the people we're going to choose to run the country, and there are all sorts of covert, fanciful associations where every stimulus, every visual image has a fanciful association attached to it for the purpose of commerce. What What that is encouraging us to do is to look at the medium itself as the source of feeling. Well, I don't know if it's news, but if, so now they have all of their newscasters, and this is a well-turned leg, I think you would agree. <laughs> you know, uh, they, they have the female newscaster with, with the, the, the high skirt, so that whatever the news is, it's not that bad. And the effort is to habituate the viewer so that, well, I'll believe anything just as long as, you know, as the girl is, is, is given the news. And uh, now, what are some of the unfortunate corollaries of that? Uh, one of the arguments of uh, this last show we were working on is that because these fanciful associations have become so ingrained in us. Uh, you know, uh, we were saying a moment ago, you know, if, you, if you're lucky enough to have a good friend or someone you love or something, and you say, okay, this happened, let's go to bed. Uh, that's knowing you can count 
on the other as if it were part of yourself. Well, what technology says is, I'm right here for you. Turn me on, my brother. I'm always going to be here 24-7. Doesn't matter if you've washed. Doesn't matter if you, all you got to do is press the button. You got company. Uh, that is the way uh, we are now encouraged to organize our behavior and the promise is, well, but you have to have the symbol in order to, in other words, you have to have enough currency, you have to work hard enough to be entitled to this constant companionship. And, you know, well, if it isn't like a real girl, oh, you can still beat off, right? So uh, you get a lot of people staying indoors. And, uh, well, it isn't all sex, but there's poker. Um, now, the, the, and the intent is to habituate, or a less generous term is to addict, the viewer to those stimuli, all of which have become articles of commerce. Uh, and w one of the things that interested me was that the, uh, uh, the attack of 9-11 is the best stimulus for commerce because, you know, all the elements of tragedy are there. And you just keep showing the image over and over and over again, and it becomes a series. And the series is, we are in peril. We are in peril. Now you need the third act for the series, which is why everyone now is so mystified that we invaded Iraq. We invaded Iraq because we needed a third act for the series, and we couldn't find the other guy. So we needed somebody whose statue to bring down. Now if a number of thousands of people die and everything else, the truth is all we were being given in our infantilization was a finish to the series, because it's all about television. Now, the series is over. Now, everybody who endorsed the invasion of Iraq said, let's bring the boys home, which is simply a way of saying, I'm done with that series. So, now the fact that uh, the surge is working or whatever the fuck that means, well, yeah, but I'm done with the series. Hello, let's bring the boys home because all it really is is programming. Now, um, so if you're trying to tell a story, now what you're trying to think of is uh, how do you find ways to tell that story that rests transparently in the spirit without being confrontational? Sometimes you need to tell a story about an extraterrestrial. Um, sometimes you need to tell a story set in a different historical time and place where the particular distortion hasn't yet taken hold, but a story about how it begins to take hold. Um, and then, having sort of felt your way into it, then you've got to forget about it and just let the people be people. But that's, that's, not a, uh, that's not a bad way to make your course through this veil of tears, is it? And, and uh, uh, what, what I'm proposing to you is that uh, it's not something new that you have to learn. It's, it's coming to accept what you already know how to do if you if you let yourself rest transparently, if you let yourself be in faith. And it's easier to be brave when you're in a community of bravery. And that's the only purpose of, uh, of this gathering. Uh, uh, and, you know, we're going to talk some more. I'm sick of that trick thing it made depresses me for fanciful reasons but I mean we'll talk about that and I we a bunch of other series that we're going to go on to talk about and and uh, 
And the thing is that uh, our ability to do this now in the midst of, uh, we're in the Writers Guild Auditorium. There's a war going on, you know, with the bosses and the Writers Guild and, and uh, uh, there is adequate blame to go around. But we're, we're resting here in the spirit. Very important. Uh, the, the, there are no rights and wrongs once you get into that kind of bullshit. There are no rights and wrongs. You know, and what's always a refreshing thing to do is to, whoever you think is right, you know, and when it, I was at this meeting last night and this, and uh, some guy says, no disrespect intended, but when the fuck did you ever negotiate uh, a deal before or, some, or, some, or something? So the next guy gets up and says, I always find that whenever someone says no disrespect intended, the next thing he says is disrespectful. And I'm sitting here thinking, I was sitting there thinking, the boss, the guild guy, whoever the fuck his name is, uh, he's saying, I am not going to go down in history as, and I'm thinking to myself, any sentence that begins with, I am not going to go down in history as, and, you know, uh, Nobody's, nobody knows what they're going to go down in history as. And if you start to think that way, you're fucking people up. By definition. Um, so I was reading, I, 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 uh, as a way of trying to uh, not be overwhelmed by the bile of hatred and bitterness, which uh, I manufacture, um, I was reading about, you know, uh, the great union, the, the first great union guy in, in America was a guy named Samuel Gompers. He started, uh, he started the Cigar Makers Union and he eventually became the head of the AFL-CIO. Very brave, you know, resourceful guy. So Samuel Gompers was instrumental in all of the anti-immigration statutes. Don't let the Mexicans in. Don't let the blacks in. Don't let the blacks work. Don't let, because he understood that for unions, to, you, you, if you had an inexhaustible supply of labor, the union was fucked. And he understood to to which principle he had given his allegiance. And in order to be good in the, envir in the environment in which he was working, he became a shit heel. Nobody, you know, uh, it, it, the Writers Guild, the Writers Guild endorsed the blacklist of writers. The Writers Guild subscribed to, in 1952, Congress having to approve, Congress having to approve writers who could write for television and film. Which is, all, and you know what? There's an argument for it. You know, if you're terrified that, uh, that uh, you know, the godless communism is going to inundate you, which is to say we're all creatures of a historical moment. And don't fucking think that you know how you're going to go down in a historical moment 50 years from now. Because you don't. And a decent humility argues for shutting the fuck up about what you're going to go down in history as and seeing what's right in front of you and not pretending that you understand the forces that, what Samuel Gompers said was, you know, Samuel Gompers said, 
a version of what Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. said, which is, the idea of the good depends upon the municipal jurisdiction. That what's good over here ain't necessarily good over there. There is no intrinsic good. It's what people agree upon, you know, so that human sacrifice, uh, if you're a Mayan, is a way of keeping the crops growing. You know, that's the idea of the good in that municipal jurisdiction. Don't fucking generalize about God is on my side unless you are resting transparently in the spirit. And then what you say, the way you rest transparently, say, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to try and let the spirit move me. I'm not going to pretend that I know the answer. And the, the, here's, here's a way to analogize. This is why I think the internet is, is so important. The internet is an inexhaustible labor supply. Think of the internet in relation to the structure of the networks as, you know, the, the idea of the networks the idea of the Writers Guild in relation to the networks works as long as there is a finite supply of material. Then the advertisers have to come to it. Then you can go to bat, you know, with the studios and stuff. Oftentimes what we find ourselves doing is fighting the battle of the past because we're afraid of the battle of the future. In the same way that uh, globalization has, you don't hear about too many strikes no more. Uh, anywhere but in this, in this wonderful community of ours. There aren't a whole fuckload of strikes going on because globalization has created a whole reservoir of alternatives. You want to make $40 an hour? I always wanted to fuck Marilyn Monroe. You know, we're going to send our jobs to India. You can't do that. Okay, uh, try and buy some bread with that. You can't do that. Because that's all you got, Jack. The effort to make the studios adhere to the Internet. The Internet, it, it, you know... Movies started, oh, well, you have to go to this building. Now, if you have to go to the building to watch the movie, I can charge you admission. Uh, well, then the radio come. Okay, well, you have to be able to afford the radio, and that's the only mode of delivery. Okay, we can charge advertisers for that because everybody's gathered around the radio, and they're staring at it as if it's a television which hasn't been invented yet. Everybody sits there, Fibber McGee. He's funny. He's funny. Don't open the closet door, Fibber. Oh, everything falls on Fibber. That happens to him every week. Now the television. Well, there's only three of them. I used to watch the fucking test pattern. Look at the test pattern. The test pattern's not trying to beat my balls off. Uh, so there's a lot of advertising, right, that you can attach to that. The, the Internet, you know, you have to pay us for the streaming, whatever the fuck it is. You know, you know what? The programming isn't so unique. That, you know, people, there's, there's like a billion channels. Ultimately, it's going to be quality. It ain't going to be which guild controls. Or another way to say it is, it's whoever rests most transparently. Well, we got a leg up. Uh, but only if we don't think of it in terms of commerce. So, you know, we're going to be working for the strike channel or whatever the fuck that thing is called. Uh, you know, just to make these talks available and then as we go forward with series and so on 
Um, and that'll be fun. And don't be thinking about who's doing what. Okay? It doesn't matter. We're just going to, you know, as you listen, we are a single organism. And we're just going to go from one phase to another phase, you know, and whoever's here, you know, you're the author today. Okay?